Would you please give a warm territory welcome to the Glenelg Football Club led by Captain Max Proud. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in 15 years, the best of the NTFL men's representative team, led by Cameron Islet. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please put your hands together, make as much noise as you can for the NT Buffaloes!
Well, ladies and gentlemen, for a special welcome to country, would you please welcome Richard Fijo, accompanied by Les Huddleston on the didgeridoo. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Richard Fiji. I'm a Larrakia man of direct male descent of the Larrakia from my father, my grandfather, and my great-grandfather in what Aboriginal culture calls grandfather law. We, the Larrakia, are the traditional owners and custodians of Darwin and its surrounding regions, and we've always been a welcoming people. We play host to everyone who lives here or visits Darwin, and we take a lot of pride in that. So I'd like you, as Darwinites and proud Territorians, to help me play host to Glenelg for the Australia Day match. Please let them feel welcome. You have come by way of Larrakia land. You'll hear the voices of our ancestors. And when you leave, you'll take the Larrakia message with you. Reverend W. Fijo, may the best team win. Thank you. And introduce me to Hudson. I would now like to introduce my colleagues, Les and Hudson. Well, a very big thank you to Richard Vijo and Les Huddleton that, for that very special welcome to country. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please now be upstanding and welcome Felicity Lamberton for a very special national anthem. Australians, oh, let us rejoice, for we are one and free. We've gold and soil and wealth for toil. Our home is girt by sea. Our land abounds in nature's gifts of beauty, rich and rare. In history's page, let every sage advance Australia fair. In joyful strains, then let us sing. Thank you very much, Felicity. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated with play just about to get underway in a couple of minutes' time here at TIO Stadium. Tonight's coin toss will be performed by the team from Kazalis with Matt Hewer and Ted Liddy. We will let you know the result of that in just a moment's time. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax and enjoy for the first time in 15 years the NTFL men's representative side up against the Glenelg Tigers.
Thank you, Nev. Uh, thank you very much. Good to be here. Uh, introduce the commentary team. Tash Medbury with us again. Tash, welcome. Thanks, Charlie. And Gilbert McAdam, of course, 111 games in the AFL for St Kilda and Brisbane, 85 games with Central Districts, 1989 McGarry medalist. Gilbert, welcome. Good to be here, Charlie. Looking very uh, forward to the game. And Tash, I'm really excited. It's good <laughs> to be back in Darwin. And Yeah, it's been a long, long time uh, for, to see this back, the Australia Day game as we know it. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a great evening, hopefully. We had a, a storm rip through oh. here about a couple of hours ago, Tash, didn't we? And uh, it's yep. gone now, but hopefully we don't get any more rain. Yeah, bucketed down, Charlie, uh, halfway, uh, half time during the uh, Red Tails and the Big River Hawks game. And unfortunately, the girls had to go out there with the ground a little bit flooded, but the girls did really well and they got the win on the board, Charlie. So it's just good to see the ochre colours running out there, as, as Gilly said. And I remember as a young girl at Gardens Oval when I'm um, looking up to the, to the legends there, and that's what got my heart racing for footy. And team women 5-5 beat Glenelg 1-1 in the earlier game here. Uh, it was uh, Alice Springs team come up to play. A Catherine team here in the Red Tails from Alice Springs prevailed 12 goals 18 to 5 goals 10 against the Big Rivers. The Big Rivers will be smarting. Uh, the Red Tails will be bragging for at least another year before they get a <laughs> chance to play each other again. It was a good game. It looks fantastic. Uh, weather's fine. Uh, as I said, I don't think we're going to get any rain. It's drizzling still just a bit, Charlie. So just out there, it's just light rain. I think like what we got before, but you can just see it's just starting to drizzle just a bit. Well, that's the worry when you come up here to play too, Gilbert, isn't it? You're either going to get wet weather or it's going to be sultry, hot and steamy. Well, I think the most important message there is that we've had rain before the game's actually started. Yeah. And I reckon there's already wet and dew in the ground. So already they're going to have to start from straight away scratch. As soon as the ball's bounce, they've got to play wet with a footy. Yeah. And they can't afford to muck around with handballs. It's about getting the ball from hand to feet as quick as possible early in the first five, ten minutes. That's what they need to do so they can make an impact. Whoever does that first, they're going to um, start the game well, I reckon. And usually the, the scoring end is the end to the right of your screen. That's normally the air, what's called the airport end, but okay. it's, there's normally the scoring end, but not always. That's the trick, isn't it? You think, you think it is, but it's, it's not always. Yeah, no, looking forward to, to this game, Charlie, and we've got two dominant Ruckman as well, and Jack Hanneth and Matty Dennis going hard at it as well in this game. So looking forward to how they uh, challenge against each other in the, mid, in the middle. How, how would you be if, if you was Vivi? And you was Marlon Motlop. Playing for Glenelg against your countrymen. You've got family members in the AFLNT. How excited would they be, Charlie? Or, 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 you know, that just adds a bit of spice to the game. That's what we want to see. I reckon we'd see the... I reckon we'd see the Motlops, uh, the heart would be for the NT as well, but they'd definitely mm. be there cheering Marlon Motlop. So it'd be a very hard game to cheer for the Motlop family because, of Who? course, you, you, you've got you've got Marlon out there playing, but legends of the Motlop family, of course, played for the for the NT FL team. So it's it, it's a who's, it's a... who's Mo going to barrack for? I oh, know. Who's what he going to barrack for? <laughs> is his heart going to follow his heart, or is he going to follow his? Speaking to the cousins, speaking to the cousins, yeah. they're going for Glenelg. Are they really? <laughs> oh, well, we might have a little uh, Motlop cheer squad out there today, <laughs> tonight. So Jack Hanneth looks like he's going to do the rucking for uh, Glenelg. Uh, Tash, who's going to do it for the uh, charity side? Big Matt Dennis. Matty Dennis, the, the only uh, representative out there from the Palmerston Magpies and having a ripper of a season, even though Palmerston have only won a couple of games. But Harley Poor and Tata Mary there on camera. You just saw him. Tash, get us away. Rep footy for the first time in 15 the years. The umpire throws it high. Matty Dennis does win the tap down. It's a hot footy there, picked up by Cetus and kicked away there by the NT player in Simon Bates. Good chain of handball is here. Gets it back to Emery. Emery goes without it. Good pressure there. It's in the back. So Emery gives away the free kick and the Tigers can clear defence here, Charlie. So short kick by Glenelg out wide into the hands there of Curran. Curran goes searching along the oh. wing. The kick was OK. They had front position. Couldn't take the mark, though. Under real pressure was Lockie Hosey. Pack comes around. A ball stuck in there. It won't come out. Now it does. Thunder escape with the footy. Kick around the body's pretty good. Vacant half forward line. Didn't get it over the top, though. Thunder get, uh, territory get hold of it. I'm calling them Thunder, but it's uh, territory <laughs> Buffaloes, isn't it? The Buffaloes get <laughs> the ball down. Harley Purantata Mary a chance confronted by Chris Curran. Whistle goes. Umpire finds a free kick at the 50 and it's going to go to uh, the territory side. Indeed it is. And into the hands of Harley Purantata Mary. Long way out from goals. Outside 50. Kicks to the top of the goal square. Good looking kick. 
Glenelg in front position, fisted away, ball goes to ground, handball came out, very cleverly done by Culler. Hard run at the footy, then Partington. He didn't get it. Stack over the top. It is wet weather footy, Gilly. Exactly what you said. Kick out of the pack goes out of bounds on the full note was touched. But uh, they're playing wet weather footy. Yeah, you can see it. Ab absolutely. And uh, Glenelg, they fumbled the ball about five times then. That's a classic example how it's going to be. You don't want to be mucking around trying to handball. You just want to get it first used to the, f to the foot and move it forward quickly as possible. So the ruck set here. Boundary throw in. So Hannah against Dennis. Neither ruckman to their advantage there. So Glenelg under pressure, just a up and under kick in hope, trying to clear it. McLean goes without it. Good hit put on the Glenelg player. And a good smother as well. So back towards the forward line here for the Buffaloes. Tackled without the footy, I thought. The umpire says play on. Again, just a kick in hope, and Brew will take the mark here for the NTFL team. So just looking what he has ahead. Eddie's calling it, so that's Brett Eddie. So three against one, and a good fist in there, as a defender does, and that was Max Proud, and he is the captain for Glenelg as well. Yeah, just currently, if you look at the field, or every player on the field, they're all virtually set half forward to the goal square of the uh, AFLNT scoring zone. So Glenelg, they're flooding right out the back 50. So throw in, good crowd here too, watching this. Glenelg in defence, couldn't get clear. Tackle was hard on the McCarthy, put him to ground. Hurried kick come away by Martini. Parked underneath the footy, couldn't take the mark was Simon Bates. Kick come out of the pack down towards the goal line. Running back in defence, strong mark taken down there with Proud. Max Proud, the skipper, squirts it out wide along the boundary line. Denog look good in defence, short kick searching for Curran, finds him. So Curran with the footy now, he's in the back pocket. Over on that far side of the ground, goes searching towards the boundary line. One on one, ball hits the ground. Glenelg trying to get to it, putting some hard work in was Edwards, didn't get it. Big tackle laid on there by Culler, and the umpire comes in and ball it up and going to the ground. I think might have been Cameron Islet, the territory skipper there. Good pressure by Edwards to hold the ball in, in close to the 50. Matty Dunnis did well to work his way in front. Ball comes out the back, kicked forward by McFarlane, that's Dane McFarlane. So it's going to trickle over the boundary line in front of A-Bank is there for the NTFL team. So another throw and a lot of stoppages so far, Gilly, in the first three and a half minutes of the game. Tash, you just took the words <laughs> right out of my mouth. I was going to say it's only earlier. We've already had five throw-ins, so we're going to be a few throw-ins today or this evening. So we've got there now Brett Eddie contests the ruck. Harley Punatana Mary tries to burrow in and Brew again will take an uncontested mark right on the 50. So well beyond his range in this weather. Love his mullet. Although he's gone back, Charlie, like a... <laughs> a bowler here, he's, he's going to back himself unless he's going to wait for a lead here but Glenelg have flooded back as Gilly said earlier so he's going to have to kick it from 55, he does it's up and under, it's going to land in the hot spot number of Glenelg players there, fist from Hannah Marlon Motlop gets his first touch tries to get the handball away, can't under enormous pressure here Glenelg in the defensive half good body work, Bates can't Get the footy, nor could Marlon Motlop and a number of NTFL players here so they can switch the play, Charlie, through the midfield. Lamp goes into the midfield, good kick, got the run around going. Handball was off to McFarlane. Handball over the top now, another handball. So they're doing it pretty well, the territory. They're just inside the square, got a half kick away. No one got clear possession. Handball was clever, came out by Bailey. Kick up towards the centre of the ground. Hard running at the footy there by uh, the... Uh, Northern Territory side, they didn't get it. This time, a chance here for Culler. Got it out wide, and the runner going forward here is Durden. Durden can chip it out wide. He's got a player out there in space in shot. Shot gets to it. He's got some acreage in front of him. Gets onto the right boot. Powers it down inside 50. Front position down in defence. Good strong mark taken back there for the Thunder, uh, for the Territory side. <laughs> Looking to switch the play here. Gets it out to Jared Stokes. Just a kick over the top. Got a running player all by himself. Just holding up the play here. I think that's Newman. No, that's Bowles, sorry. That's Daniel Bowles from the Nightcliff Footy Club. An early jump there. The umpire's going to pin him for that. It's an unrealistic attempt. So the free kick is going the way of Paredes. Good to see Vivi. He's just come on. He's been on for the last 30 seconds, Tash. So kick to Brody Philo. Won the Nichols medal, the best and fairest medal up here last season. Rooming kick. 
And underneath it is Kyle Emery. Can't take the mark. Brew is in there. He started the game really well. And he's earned the free kick. He's got a number of touches already. So Philo. Philo's asking for a lead. He doesn't have that. And just dummies around one. Put himself under pressure. Just managed to get the kick away. But Glenelg can clear it. Just on the defensive 50, so a free kick, and Glenelg are going to have a bit of time to clear this footy, Charlie. Yeah, ball in the hands here of Klusky. Goes at right angles across the defensive 50 arc. Handball goes back. Oh, turned it straight over. Gave a chance here for Eddie. Eddie fires away at goal from a long way out. Oh, it's a good Ooh. kick. And then it just at the last moment hit. Might have just touched the post as it was going through. And a minor score. The first score has taken nearly seven minutes of play. Yeah, well, that was a skill error there by like Glenelg. You know, oh. back 50. He's just kicked it straight to the fellow that tried to have that shot on goal was Brett Eddy. So just a poor kick. Two skill errors in the space of 10 seconds. It could cost them the first goal of the game for the Buffaloes. I think that was Brad McCarthy with the kicking out duties there for Glenelg. Brett Eddy, leading goal kicker. I believe up here, competition. Looks good off the boot. The umpire hardly moves. He's got the first goal on the board. He's got the first goal of the game. Just after seven minutes here and the NTFL are leading Glenelg. Yeah, great start boy. Uh, the uh, AFL NT Buffaloes, they've started the game off. There's no wait. There's definitely dominated the uh, first 10 minutes or so. So as we see the error, just a shocking skill error, and that's what Glenn will have to be careful of. That made two errors, resulted in a, in a goal. The skill level of, of the Buffaloes at the moment just seems to be a bit better than Glenn. Seems like Glenn is still trying to find their way. And um, I, I don't know about their tactics of flooding back, because when they get the quick kick out, there's always three or four AFL uh, Darwin players there. So they have to have a look at that, Tash. So back in the middle. So that's Westerberg in the ruck. Vivi went against him. Good to see Vivi, t territory player there, playing for Glenelg, but uh, sending it forward. Simon Bates, he's a good kick of the footy, down towards the 50-metre line. Ball caught there, and a whistle has gone by from the umpire, and he's found a mark or free kick to uh, Glenelg deep in the back pocket. Buffaloes are winning the clearances as well from the centre bounces. Kick along the boundary line. The ball came off hands, running hard at it and didn't get to it. Klusky, handball goes back. Did well through Edwards. Little chip kick forward. Left it behind. Now Glenelg got some chances here. They'll use the handball. They've done that cleverly. Their defensive work's been pretty good, although they've conceded a goal. Here's some hard running from Cetus. Brilliant player, Cetus. Now into the hands of uh, Condon. That was and lucky. <laughs> Condon chipped it out wide and gave it off to Wassell. Their defence is good, but their skills, they need to pick up on their skills, Charlie. So Searle hits his teammate McCarthy. Still in the defensive half here, Glenelg. What does he have on? Just a poor kick again. So Paridi's chopped it off, but Glenelg win the footy back, coming through the midfield. Well done. And a good hand in there by Newman. But Glenelg have the footy. Marlon Motlop has it now. Dances around one, dances around two, has a snap. And it lands in the arms of the NTFL player. He tries to shovel it towards the behind but they keep it in play here dangerous here for the defensive unit for the ntfl and a snap kick across the face of goal goes out of bounds deep in the forward pocket so it's going to be a boundary throw in charlie they had an opportunity there glenelg yeah didn't use it well enough did they no, that was great pressure by that Glenelg player that turned the ball over and caused the um the kick to go out of bounds so good pressure by the by them well they've gone a long way back here for this throw in now they're going to have to run five metres in towards it. Knock back over the back. Big tackle laid on there. That was uh, Searle. Under pressure goes to ground ball and all. Ter Cam territory. Cameron Eilert, he's led by example, the skipper. Yeah. Great tackle there. So territory appealing for a free kick. They're not going to get that. Here's the ball up. Liam McBean involved in it. Handball came out. Snap around the body for Glenelg. Goes down towards the goal line. Ball hits the ground. Down there was Searle. He didn't get to the ball. It's rushed through for a minor score. And McLean comes away with a short kick from defence. So Braden McLean to Shawnee Edwards. Edwards sticks to the boundary line. And again, just good footy. That's a good mark in these conditions. 
That's what Terry, that's what I, uh, Buffaloes have to do, Tash. They have to move it fast from defence. They can get uh, Glenel caught out. So Newman kicks it up the line. Cole Emery was there, but it's fisted over the boundary line underneath the scoreboard. So another boundary throw in, another stoppage. 11 minute mark, and TFL 117. Glenel just the one point. As we see Brett Eddy there against his opponent, Toby Pink. So the Ruckman here, Neil VV and Matty Dennis. So the game really hasn't settled yet, has it? It's, it's a bit just, of an arm wrestle, isn't it's it? It's feeling its way. VV in front position here will get there and does the ruck work. He's bulked up a bit since he, since he went away. Neil VV played for Wanderers in the local competition here, played in a premiership side for them. Him and Dennis would have had some battles in the, in the yeah. local competition, I'm sure. Yeah. Yep. So they'll do it all again. Here's Matty Dennis front position. VV, well, he got to the front position, didn't get his hand on it though. Ball goes to ground, kick off the ground for the territory side. Spillage comes out wide to McCarthy. Runs through the tunnel. Harley Poor and Tatamere got to him, put a real big tackle on him. Martinis. Looks like he was going to get the footy, but it went instead to Harley Poor and Tatamere. Great tackle, wasn't it? Tiwi Islander. He didn't give up, did he? Well, it's no. good to see a little speedy player do that sort of... Instead of using it for his pace, he's using it for his tackle in his defensive game, Charlie. Good work there to Yates. Martini was a chance to get to that. He didn't. Now he's a chance. Gets it. They get to him. Hold him up. Ball and all. Pack comes over the top. And Pye will come in and ball it up. They're just about uh, 10 metres out from uh, the Northern Territory goal. They lead the one goal, one to a go to a point. I like that move when they put Vivi on in the ruck because earlier on Glenn were getting carved up in the centre square. Vivi's actually steadied him down a little bit. Vivi's good because he's actually becomes a rover when the ball hits the ground. Very, very he's making well. a contest of it. That's what he's doing, Tash. So Glenel clear it, going to go close to the boundary line. The umpire call a boundary throw in. That wasn't deliberate. Just bounced that way. So directly under under our commentary box. So still a bit of an arm wrestle. There's no. Been under the pump, the Glenelg defensive half, but they've managed quite well. So Dennis again with VV. Let's watch the body work here. Dennis works his way in front, but well read by the Glenelg player in cell. Picked up by Shawnee Edwards. Just boots it back to where the footy come from. VV, two fists to it. Brew is tackled with it. Then Dane McFarlane goes without it. Good hit by Marlon Motlop. There's a number of players around here. Motlock's taken to ground in the back, but the umpire says play on. A lot of hard tackling in there. Brady Philo clears the footy. Cameron Islet's there. So too is Sharon Berg for Glenelg. Picks it out wide. One-on-one. -on -one. That's well done by the Glenelg player in Bailey. Just kicked it out to space. So one-on-one. -on -one. Good body work there by Liam McBean. It's two-on-one. He's still winning the battle out there, Liam McBean. It's close to the boundary line. They keep it in Glenelg. Pick it up the line, one-on-one. -on -one. Shawnee Edwards in there with a fist. Comes into the defensive 50. Good pick up there by Dom Brew. And a poor kick in. Shawnee Edwards just clears with a thumping kick and the mark is taken out there by John T. Sharonberg for Glenelg. And goes short with it across field and gives it off to Hanneth. So Hanneth and it's out on the wing on that far side, scoreboard wing. Territory players in front position. Coming out, that was a good handball too by Bailey. Rolls towards the boundary line. McBean will get there. Tried to get the kick away, smothered and out of play. When, so. when Glenn will get it in their, sword, in their forward 50, they've got to deliver it better to their big men. They virtually kicked it to two AFL NT players versus one Glenn Hill player. They've got to do better than that. So good numbers here watching this footy match. They're desperate for some good rep footy and they're seeing a pretty good game early on. Purantata Mary looking for it. High tackle there. Umpire ignored it. Kick from a long way out. Oh. It's going to fade away. Came off the boot there of... Uh, uh, was that Edwards? I'm pretty sure Jackson it was. Jackson Edwards, Edwards yeah. yeah. Faded away in the end to be through for a point. So here's Lant to bring the ball back into play for the Territory Buffaloes. Lant plays for St Mary's. In the local comp. It's a long Matty Dennis is there. It claims a mark. I thought it come off Brew, but the umpire paid it. And balls back to a teammate, kicks it up the line. Two on one, good work there done by Robert Turnbull for NTFL. The Nelk have the numbers. Just a fumble, just put him under pressure. Camry Islet's in there. Harley Punatana Mary started this game very well, kicks it to space, but the cap 
Captain in Max Proud takes an uncontested mark for Glenelg. And then stretches it out wide. Good looking kick too. Measured it nicely and gave it off to Durden. So Durden's just outside the defensive 50. Looks to go short. Still not sure where to go. Now he goes back to where he intended in the first place. And gave it off to a teammate standing alongside the boundary. Over on that scoreboard wing. 16 and a bit minutes gone. Only goal to the oh, territory side. Dangerous. Kick across field is dangerous. Cut off by Cam Islet. Sensational player, this man. Another turnover, Charlie. For Glenelg. For Glen Short kick, just barely the 15 metres. But uh, it, was over. it was a high tackle anyway. The Buffaloes uh, are handling the wet conditions better than Glenelg at the moment. So Glenelg need to step up. Back chatting the umpire, so it's 50. That was a player on the mark there for Glenelg, Luke. Partington, I think that was Charlie. Well, you wouldn't want to be the coach of Glenelg because he'd be he wouldn't be happy with that. Like now, he's right in front. Tashin will kick it. So Turnbull from directly in front goes in and kicks the goal for uh, the territory side. So they stretch the lead. Now, two goals, one to two points. Yeah, like I said, Brett Hand, the coach of um, Glenelg, obviously was uh, connected to the AFLNT through the Thunder program and look it's great for him to probably come back uh, to here. He coached St Mary's I believe back in the day so yep. I reckon it's a great relationship that they could have with a with a sample club in Adelaide. I think he got a premiership or two didn't he with St Mary's Yeah Charlie? he did, he did at least one and he coached Thunder as well didn't he? Yep. And, and, and then he, went to the Giants and then finished up at Glenelg. And he knows the conditions so I'm sure he should have let the uh, Glenelg players before the game about the conditions because you can't fiddle with it, you've got to move it on. So Matty Dennis just takes it out of the rut, kicks it for Cameron Islet with a beautiful chest mark. Plays on quickly. That's what Gilly wanted him to do, but just dropping in the hole there. And Ooh. that should be 50, but dropping in the hole very courageous. He knew the pack was coming, and that was Chris Curran. I don't think that point, no, the point's not going to count. They brought it back, and the ball's going to be given to Curran. Probably lucky not to get a 50 there. Yeah, I thought so as well. So Curran finds his teammate in colour. So... Hello, who just got a teammate out wide, but it's going to drop short. And Cameron Islet again with the intercept mark. He's got to play all by himself. That's Harley Punatana Mary, and it doesn't get there, and it's chopped off well by Reed Color for Glenelg. So Color's having an influence on this game. Had a few touches in this first term. He's a lefty, kicks it well, keeps it alongside the boundary line, finds the teammate there in Reynolds. So Lukey Reynolds, he'll go short as well. The kick was okay, and just spilled the mark. Gave a chance there for Bowles to get it. Little push out. Finishes up with Condon. He went further and gave it off to Marlon Motlop. And Motlop from the wing kicks up the half forward. Late getting there was McBean. Knocked it towards the boundary line. Shawnee Edward gets it for the territory side and rushes it out of play. Charlie, wouldn't they kick it into their forward players? There's only one player there. They're going to have someone crumb on the ball because yeah. there were three Buffalo players, one Glenelg player. They're going to have numbers. They're not reading that the ball's actually heavy and it's dropping short as well. They're yeah. waiting for the ball to come that little bit longer. And, and, and just front and, front and centre. Yep. And just be there and wait. And if it comes to you, you get it. If it doesn't, you tackle. Need to get numbers at the footy. That's one of the things they need to work on. So Zach West, Westerberg is in the ruck now against Hannah. So boundary throw in. Push and shove there, but... Hannah won the tap, tap down. Picked up by Cedars. He was, umpire says play on. I thought he was taken high, but good call in the end. Another stoppage. Didn't gain too much meterage there, Glenelg. But everything counts at the moment, especially in these conditions. Cameron Island did, oh, Westenberg did well not to give away the free kick there. So a number of players in there. The ball comes out the back. Jared Stokes is there. So was Josh Cabillo. Dane McFarlane goes without it. Glenelg here. Are on. They got numbers on the outside, but well read by Jared Stokes. And another ball up, Charlie. Let's see if you can clear the <laughs> stoppage. <laughs> Glenelg's doing well here. They're out of season. They, they, yeah. Aren't they? And, they're, they've, they, they, and they've only just met their coach for the first time, and they're looking pretty good. They're getting a lot of the ball, but oh, they... High yeah, tackle the there kick. on Liam McMean. I think he's going to get the free kick. And Dylan Lant just with these conditions, a lot of people were sliding, Charlie, so I don't think he expected the, the big fella to get down that low. It's, it's, it's almost like they were, they, were, they were hoping to get this goal because it's almost like if you don't get that first goal, it's almost like you're... Yeah, especially you, in the first quarter. Yeah, because you want to make a statement early and obviously the Buffaloes have made a statement early, which is great, and that's the start that they needed. Grinnell need to answer and they need a, they need a goal right now. 
I know it's only early, but you don't want to let him get too far ahead. He's a goal shooter, this man. Liam McBean he goes back, kicks it goal. Looked pretty good off the boot. Goal umpire has a bit of a look at it. They're happy with it. McBean gets the goal for uh, the Glenelg side. It's taken most of the first quarter, but they've uh, got the goal they wanted. Gilbert. Yeah, Liam McBean, he's been a great player. He, he won the Ken Farmer medal in the Sandville uh, back in 2019 and, two, and, and this, this year. So, look, he's a, he's a weapon up forward and they could do with some goals from him tonight, that's for sure. The errant tackle on him gave him the free kick and he made them pay. 202 centimetres, Charlie. That's two. <laughs> he's two metre Pete, two metre Liam. <laughs> wow. Gee, we, we grow him tall these days, don't we? So Hannah and Westerberg, umpire throws it up. Westerberg wins it down. First at the footy was Tom Schott, but he went without it. Now Paredes, good left foot kick. Cammy Islet was working his body well, but a free kick is going the way of Brett Eddie. Yes, yeah, so Eddie is getting the free kick. Because I thought they were holding on to each other there, yeah. but. The umpire, no, it's going to Cameron Islet. So Eddie tried to steal it from him, but Cameron Islet's got the free kick. Probably prefers having shots on goal. And no, got and it's back chat again. Geez, what, what would, Gilly, if you were the coach, what would you do to your players? Well, straight away, right now, I'd get him off the ground and I'd be having a quiet little word to him and let him have a little think for five minutes and then I'll say, you'll be back on. Have a think about what you've done because you've just cost us another goal. So that's Cameron Islet. So he's <laughs> drilled it through so Northern Territory... Uh, team has their third 22 minutes gone in this first quarter. And two of those goals have come from 50 metres. Two 50 metre penalties. penalties. Two undisciplined acts. I call them unforced errors, Charlie. They're not forced errors. They're unforced errors. And so it, there's no need for it. And he wasn't a surety of kicking that goal. It should, have been, it should have been play on anyway because I don't believe that he was actually older than Cameron but the umpire made the call and they should have just it. kept their mouth quiet but they didn't and they've got another goal against them after they just kicked that first goal. So they come out of the middle with a dribble kick, rolled out towards the wing. Front position down there and working hard was Searle. VV in this, can he get it? No, it doesn't go to him. Instead it goes to Klusky just as a siren brings it to a close. So tough quarter of footy, but uh, the Northern Territory side have the lead at quarter time. Three goals, one to one goal, two. The teams in their huddles out there, coaches talking to them. Gilbert, what do you make that first quarter? Oh, I reckon it was a good quarter for the Territory side, and they dominated that quarter. Obviously, they've had four, four scoring shots to Geelong, three scoring shots. But um, I just think the, their skill level, um, just the way they started the game, they're definitely here to play tonight, and they really want to win. You can definitely see that. Whereas, on the other hand, when you look at the Grinnell side, they just seem to be trying to work out the conditions, Charlie, and they just seem to be struggling a few times with the wet ball. So it's probably a good time to get the coach, Brett Hand, out there just to settle them down a bit and say, fellas, all right, now you've had a taste of it. You know what's happening. You don't want to muck around too much. You've just got to move the ball forward as quick as you can. But more importantly, you've got to have numbers at the ball tash. And you said that before. Yep. If you don't have numbers, because if the ball hits the ground, these territory players, that's uh, that's what they're good at, and that's mm. what they're known for. They're fleet-footed, front and square players. So, Gilly will have to be careful of that. Yeah, and Brett Hand, you, you're right, Gilly. He's kept the kept the guys in. And he's still chatting to them as mm. the territory team's going to set up positions now. So, definitely letting his authority know. And of course, in the first quarter, two 50-meter penalties that resulted in goals. Yeah, both yeah. both coaches were giving their team a, a real rev up. But uh, I've got to say this, that the end that uh, the, the Territory side went then was the scoring end. It, it, it traditionally well, is the scoring <laughs> okay, end. Well, Whatever you do, I'm not sure why. Well, the, well, on that note, Charlie, I'm looking forward to the second quarter and um, <laughs> we'll just see how it pairs out, eh? <laughs> and you're right, Charlie. Uh, hey, and, and Tash, you know what? I'm not going to argue with Charlie <laughs> King. He's only been doing it for 50 years. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with him. <laughs> He's the man who he knows territory football. Don't worry about that. He is territory footy. Exactly. Can't, ima can't imagine football <laughs> in, the, in the territory without him. I think <laughs> I was for watching him on ABC oh. with calling the footy, Charlie. 11 <laughs> points to the margin <laughs> here. I, I, Three I was listening to, to him when I was 10 years old, Tash. <laughs> 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 no, you're a, you're a legend, Charlie King. Don't worry about that. Tash read me to get us underway. So Dennis and Hannah, they so both misread it there, the Ruckman. Picked up by the Glenelg player. Just kicked forward by Martini, chopped off 
by the Territory. McFarlane, he's a running machine. McFarlane there for the Territory. Matty Dennis gets there as well. He's taken mm. high. Then he lays a tackle. Good work, Good Matty tackle. Dennis. The big ruckman. So, Bruce there. He started the first quarter really well. Brody follow. Good hands to McFarlane. McFarlane was tackled. Cedars now is tackled as well. Gets the handball away. Bruce back in there. Vivi nearly took off his head. And the umpire's going to call it. Neil Vivi is definitely throwing his body around. He's trying to line up a few of these territories. Well, boys. I don't know what Brett Hand said to him at quarter time, but you can see that they've come out with a bit of bit of vigour about him. Yeah, no doubt about that. Martini with the kick forward. Inside the 50-metre line ball left on the ground. They go in searching for it. A little kick came out of the pack. And often when you just drop it on the boot and kick it out of the pack, it's a 50-50 chance. And this time it worked well for the territory. Kick towards Matty Dennis. Mark in front, though, was taken by McFarlane. McFarlane goes across the field to Islet. Islet goes searching up the middle of the ground. Front position down there. Didn't get to the ball, though, Brett Eddy. Working hard still was uh, Martini. Martini still doing. Got the handball away while he was down on his oh, knees. Good pick up. Good kick and good pick up, too, by McBean. McBean's handball to the middle of the ground. Now the kick is inside 50. And the Territory players just swarm in attack, in, in defence, and take it into attack with a little kick out wide towards the boundary line, knocked over the boundary line there by McFarlane. And the boundary umpire will come into play. Crowd looking on, enjoying rep footy back in Darwin for the first time in 15 years. Bill Glenel made a move and put Vivi in the forward. I, I like that move because now they've got two, two big guys, him and McBean, and they've got the other ruckman in the ruck. So they've got three big talls. It's going to be interesting with the weather, how it is. So a short boundary throw, and I thought the umpire should have called it back but he didn't. Now he's picked up a free kick going the way of the Tigers to Pink. Pink switches the play. Dangerous, but gives it to his skipper. Proud. Proud ignores the running player running past him and goes out further to Reynolds. Got the numbers here, the Tigers. Back to Reynolds. It's a poor kick again, but VV throws his body in. He's tumbling cool. around. Good pick oh. up there. Good spin. Puts it in a dangerous area to McBean yeah. and he takes the mark. Good work by Glenelg and Gilly have hit the nail on the head. They have come out with a lot more intensity and fire. Absolutely, Tash, and they needed to do that because he would have given it to them and said, what's going on with the 250 metre penalties? We've got two goals out of it. We need to make a statement straight away. They actually won the first tap out the centre square, which was great for them. Mm. That gives you a bit of momentum, gives you confidence. Mm. More importantly, if you kick the first goal, that just sparks you up and, uh, you know, that'll fire them, fire them up, hopefully. So McBean kicked one in the first quarter. He kicked one goal so far, but he's a goal-kicking machine. McBean comes in. It looks good off the boot. The umpire doesn't move too much. He snuck it in. He's got his second on the board, and so did Glenelg. That's what they needed to start this second quarter. Well done to the Glenelg Footy Club. Yeah, that's great, Charlie. That's what we wanted. That's what we want because we want to see a great contest this evening. And yeah, just the way they played their first quarter, that, that's a great sign. It's only the first five or so, three and a half minutes, but they've come out with intent. There's no doubt about it, and that's what they need to do. Whereas on the other hand, now the Territory mob, they have to respond with a goal now. And they did. They did make some changes. So Neil Vivi's gone into the forward line. Marlon Motlop's gone to full forward. Yes, and McBean's in there as well. So they've actually they're actually playing taller than they did in the first quarter, which is unusual because of the wet weather and conditions. So it's going to be interesting what happens. Sorry, Charlie. No, they nullify each other. The two big ruckmen, both wearing number 44. But they've won a free kick out of the middle and, and they're going 50. to get 15, 15, 50 metres out of this. Against Abe Anchors, so just... So Reed Culler is going to take it down to the 50 metre line. I reckon then Big Hannah said to him, have a shot. Gee, that's, that was a small 50, wasn't it, Charlie, or what? Yeah, you wouldn't buy real estate off that umpire. That, well, was, that was about 40 metres. Let's stay with it. Here's uh, Reed Culler, directly in front. Onto the left boot he goes. He's oh. got plenty of distance on it and accuracy, accuracy there as well. They've got another goal. Two in a rush from Bunnell. I said it before, didn't I? Oh, you never argue with Charlie King because he <laughs> knows territory football. What did he say at quarter time, Tash? He the said that's the goal scoring end. end. That's right. Who's kicked the first two goals? Bunnell have kicked the first two. <laughs> Charlie, you're, a, you're an amazing man. <laughs> No, nah, great call, Charlie, great call. It obviously is, and we're talking about the airport end. That's the scoring end. Mm. You're right, spot on. 
I think it became even more prominent when the Michael Long Centre went up as well. So it just there's something about that. That end. That end. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So back in the we've never been able to work it out. <laughs> the umpire just waits for everyone to get in their positions. So Dennis against Hannah. So just won by Dennis. Comes down to Paredes. Paredes for the territory kicks it forward. Brett Eddie's underneath it. Fist away by Proud. Getting to it first out there is shot for Glenelg. And then Maddie Dennis with a big up and under kick into the forward line. A few flies. It comes to the back of the pack. Cameron Island picks it up around the body. Through for a behind. So the territory looked on fire there, but don't respond with a goal. And it's just through for a behind for Glenelg. So the Tigers with their kick along the boundary line. Gives it to Marlon Motlop. Goes short. Finds Yates. Still inside defensive 50. And now he's kick almost to the wing. Ball hits the ground there. No one can get to it. Dennis waits for it to come out. It doesn't come out. He went looking for it. He, he paused there. Everyone sort of did. Maybe the whistle half went. I could pick up by Motlop. Motlop again. Marlon Motlop. Mm. And camped underneath it is Shawnee Edwards for the territory side. Does he look to switch play? No, just a... Short kick to McFarlane it was dangerous. Barely went the 15. Back to Edwards. Edwards is in trouble. He needs to get rid of it. He does. McFarlane goes back in. Matty Dennis is there, the big ruckman. He's pushed in the back. The umpire says play on. Coming through the midfield now is Allen. Allen over the top. That's an errant kick. And Brody Newman was in front. And it's stole by Neil Beebe. He'd love to get a goal in his home crowd. Gives it off. And a banana kick. Had a little bit more time there, the Glenelg player in Posey. So it's three for a behind, but good play then again by the Tigers. Mullen Motlop's getting a couple of possessions from the back pocket. See, he set that up, Charlie. Short kick up the line. They went straight to McFarlane. And then he takes it out wide, searching along the boundary line. There's a player parked out there. Territory can build from the half-back line. Can they make something work? The kick is good. The mark was dropped by big Matt Dennis. Left on the ground. The pie comes in. Found a free kick. It's going to go to the oak and white jumper. Yes, handball to the running player going past as McFarland kicks up towards the 50 metre line. The defensive work back there by Glenelg is very good. I'm pretty impressed with that. But here's the kick from 50 metres out. Vacant goal line. Bounces, bounces, it's bounces true. all the oh. way. Goes through for a goal. That was Nate Paredes, Charlie. So Paredes just with a kick. Got it over the top of the wall and it just kept bouncing oh, and went just... straight. They're going to have a discussion about it. I think it hit the goal post, Charlie. No, no, no. no. Going to give it. No. <laughs> give the goal to Paredes. <laughs> oh, just make it a bit exciting. <laughs> Nah, you oh, you got to say well done to Paredes. Hmm. He's been good there. Him, him and young Abe Ankers, they, um, they've been in there. All it's sort of been in the forward line, but he's come in at certain times. And with Dennis in the ruck, they're um, they're dominating the centre bounces and around the ground, I believe, at the moment. Now in the women's game, if that bounced, it stayed there. It was that flood at the ground that yeah. just did, did not move. So it's fortunate that this ground is really good with drainage, and you're seeing that they actually got a bounce out of the footy. Mm. And I like that. I like that Dominic Brew. He's something about him. I know he's got the mullet, but there's something about him. He's he's puts his body on the line. Well, I heard he's he's a black belt or something in martial arts, so he's pretty strong. The back in the middle. There's Brew. There's that man again. Gets it out wide, looking for Lant. Lant fumbled the footy. It's two against one. Neil Vivi taps it to the advantage of his teammate Searle. Searle's close to the boundary. Takes it over. It's going to be a boundary throw-in. Vivi's lifted this yeah, quarter. Yeah, loving the way he's gone about. This quarter, Neil Vivi, of course, playing in front of his home crowd. So he sets. Matty Dennis comes very late in. So just a wrestle there. Well done to Vivi. We're giving away a little bit of strength to Matty Dennis. Gets in there, and his second and third efforts are been great in this quarter. And there he goes. Gets the free kick. Deserving of it against Brew. Brew didn't want to give it to him. He was going to take it anyway. <laughs> and then he played on quickly, went back with it, gave it off to his oh. teammate, Bailey, who goes for goal and kicks the goal. I'll tell you what, you can thank Neil Beebe for all of that. Well, I'll tell you what, Charlie. They've kicked, um, Brew have kicked three goals to the Territory one goal. Now, what's happened is, in the first quarter, when um, the Territory were kicking that way, they were actually flooding back. 
um, oh, sorry, Glenul were flooding back. Tertiary Mobile flooding back. When you get three goals in the first quarter, in the first few minutes, do they make a decision now? Do they come back and do they block them? Hmm. That's because they have to stop the momentum because they've kicked three goals to one. So they don't want to let them get too far away. Well, they've got their noses in front now, yeah. 27 to 26. And they're rotating their forward line as well. There's not the same players in there for too long in that forward line. So back in the middle, VV against Dennis. Dennis wins the tap down. Free kick is going the way of the Tigers. No, the umpire's found it off the footy. So it is going to Cetus. That's James Cetus. Kicks it to a teammate all on his own in Turnbull. Kicked a goal in the first quarter. Good body work against Matty Dennis there, but the umpire's picked up a free kick. It's going the way of the Tigers. They play on, the umpire plays the advantage. Out wide, the booming kick, looking for McBean. McBean cr creates a contest and a good tackle from behind. The umpire doesn't pay it. That was Paredes with that tackle. A number of players out there trying to clear it. Shoveled back to the Tigers player. Dances around one, now gets his kick away barely. Good tackle by Brew again, hand pass from Partington on the McGarry medal in 2019 for the Tigers. Good body work there by Newman. Newman's trying to get it out, but it's stuck between his legs. The umpire is going to ball it up. So again, in a dangerous area here for the Territory defence. And, and, and this is what I'm looking for. Do they go back and flood now, Charlie, or do they keep their players up forward? That's the big question that the coach has to make, Chris they Bash. They certainly have a lot of players down there in defence. Here's the ball in the hands of Brady Searle. Got the kick away. Then a big climb at the back. Might have been Reynolds. Ball hits the ground. Pack comes over the top of it. They're not going to let that come out. Umpire's going to have to come in and ball it out. Now it did come out the side. And Territory with the kick away. Right alongside the boundary. Rolls towards the boundary line and over. About 60 metres out from the Glenelg goals. Point the lead here. 27 plays 26. 4-3 to 4-2. Good football match in front of us. So the umpire sets for a boundary throw-in. Again, Dennis and VV will contest. VV jumps early. Matty Dennis takes it, kicks it forward, but it's chopped off by the Tigers. The visit back into McBean, and that's a drop mark there by the Territory player. So putting his teammates under enormous pressure here. The McBean gets in there, gets the footy out, back to a teammate on his own. That's the goal kicker and Bailey. The Bailey puts it to the hot spot. Picked up by the Territory player, kicks it out wide. Jared Stokes puts the afterburners on. He gets there first, but close to the boundary. They've got the numbers here now. Harley Putatara and Mary gets there. But Glenelg kick it back in through Yates from the back. Glenelg tried to get a hand to it, and then Jared Stokes drops the mark. Picked up by Partington. Cetus gets it back. Doesn't go anywhere, so it's a hot footy here. Very hard conditions with the rain that we had previously. So another ball up, Charlie. Oh, the Territory dominated the first quarter. Glenilla currently dominating the second quarter, Charlie. 13 and a half minutes gone. VV in ruck, got it down beautifully. Kick around the body here for Glenelg. They park underneath it. They take a mark, no they can't. Knocked to ground at the 50 metre line. Territory in there, still this is packs over the top. Good play by it, uh, Glenelg to just Stop this, keep yeah. stopping the game. It's and, like and they got the feeling of the game now. Yeah, and, yeah. and you know what is? That's that sandful style. That's what they do. They have numbers where the contest is, and that's mm. not territory footy. Territory footy, we like to open it up. So that's, you know what they're doing, Charlie? They're strangling the territory mob yeah. at the moment. Yeah, you're right. With you're numbers, right. with numbers at the ball. You're right. And here we go again. They're getting numbers at the footy. Kicked off the ground. So VV was coming off for an interchange, but he goes back in. He's given it everything this quarter. Gets it to Bailey. Bailey with a chip kick to McBean. McBean, that barely went 10 metres. The umpire <laughs> says play on him. He tried to pull the umpire. Matty Dennis is there, the big ruckman. That's a beautiful spot up kick. Finds Bowles in the centre of the ground. This is that territory style you're talking about, Gilbert. There's the run. Well, that's it. They've got to they look for space and they've got to open it up. So Boyd has it, delivers it in, but it's going to be chopped off. But at the back is Cameron Islet. Cameron Islet's dangerous in these areas and centers it through the corridor. Paredes has three on one, but he comes to ground. He still has it, shovels it out to a teammate, and the umpire's 
called him for a throw. So the free kick is going the way of Durden. I've been impressed with this period. He's, he's, something, he's a tough little nut, isn't he? He gets yes, the hard ball. Yep. He seems to put his body on line for his mates. He's, he's a good team player, Charlie. He is indeed. Durden's kick is a good one. And they can use it here. Glenelg, they've got a player in the middle. They didn't see Bailey all by himself there. Even their skill level's gone better this quarter, hasn't it, Charlie? Yeah. Even uh, Luke Reynolds has got it now. Onto the left boot he goes. Oh, as soon as and I say that, it's straight <laughs> over. The commentator's oh. first, yeah. really. <laughs> Shouldn't have said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so here's uh, McLean with the short kick. Puts it into the back pocket, gives it to Stokes. Over the top to McLean, who just about fell over. In fact, oh, diving at the feet there, so free kick is going the way of Seal Oxell for Cullum Sell. Kicks it out here to Brody Philo. So Philo with a two on one. Cole Emery hit the ground, but the ball come down there. He goes in again for a second effort. He needs to get rid of it. He does now. Jeez. Drags it in, then he gets it out. He's getting slung around down there. There's Neil Beavy again. He's getting in everything. Good hands again, and they've got the numbers here, Gilly. So Glenelg <laughs> kick it forward. Bailey and chopped off in the end by that player in Callum Searle. So over the boundary line for another boundary throw in with 16 and a half minutes nearly gone in the second quarter. The game's picked up this quarter. There's no doubt yeah. about the game. It's a lot better this game, though, this quarter than the first quarter. So knocked from the back was done cleverly by Hannah. Whistle's gone. Free kick played here. We'll have to come back. It's going to be a territory free kick across their half-back line. So the umpire there, Mark Noonan, got the umpiring gig tonight. Been umpiring for a very long time, Charlie. Yes, he had. <laughs> he has indeed. Another possession, Paredes. Kicks it up the line. Harley Punantan and Mary was front and centre, but it was chopped off there by Martini. Kicks it forward. That's a beautiful chest mark. White Searle, that's Brady Searle. And a turnover. There's that man, Nate Paredes. He is, gets leather poisoning usually when he's got his St. Mary's colours on. This will be no different, no doubt. And just a late Ooh. hit there by Matty Dennis. Territory had three numbers to one Glenil play then. That was probably shouldn't have uh, gave away the free kick, but it, they got it. So here's Martini. Can kick up towards the... 50 metre line and fisted away towards the boundary line and out of play. I've been trying to look out where Territory could get better. I know they got Jared Stokes in the back line, in the back 50. I reckon they should put him on the ball just so he can have some physical presence mm. just to make a few statements. So Andy Dennis from the back did really well. Tapped it down to Brew. Got the kick away under pressure. Gets to Islet. He, he went out of play with the ball. He danced, to, he danced pretty close to it, Charlie. Yeah. He just went over in the end. <laughs> so the Ruckman, just waiting for the Ruckman. Geez, they go a long way back. You're right, Charlie, and then run in a couple of metres. So Hannah, Dennis, Dennis gets a hand in there to Cetus. Simon Bates drops the footy. The umpire lets it go. Cetus is back in there again. It's boot to ball. Territory player got a push in the back there, but free kick is going the way of that man, Paredes. He's, he's racked up the stats this quarter. So he tries to dance around his opponent on the mark, gets it to Brew. Brew kicks it out wide. Good mark taken by Abe Anchors. Spins around, kicks it into the corridor. Dangerous kick, chopped off. Glenelg should get it with Klusky. Just a few hand passes here. They need to kick it, clear it. Kicks it up to Reynolds. Luke Reynolds has had a good quarter. Kicks it in, that man kept running in Klusky. But dropped the mark he probably should have taken. Mm. Now the numbers are there for Territory. So hand pass over the top, but it's gone out of bounds for a boundary throw in. Almost half time here. See, it's been a tough last five, six minutes, isn't it? Oh, it's been a very, very enjoyable second quarter, Charlie, because the way the game started at, in the first quarter, it was very slow. Yeah. The game's definitely picked up, Tash. And well, I've been impressed with Grill's pressure and their tackling because they're doing it. They're doing it in numbers. So three goals to one in this quarter to Glenelg. They've answered the challenge and probably challenged by their coach, Brett Hand. But they're working this ball now, looking for teammates upfield. Here's VV handballs. To himself, but didn't quite get to Pick it. Up. But uh, Glenelg now can bring it down towards the 50 metre line. Oh, they've left the ball behind. Handball out here to the running player in McFarlane for the territory. 
He's trying to get onto his right boot. Goes with the kick. It's not the best kick to Big Matty Dennis. Had to get him bending for it. They come in hard at the footy, oh. Durden. Ball stolen this time by McFarlane. Stand and deliver. Kick towards the 50 metre line. A little bit of holding on Paredes then. Paredes goes in again and gets it and gets caught in a tackle. Spillage gets inside the 50 metre line. High kick towards the centre of the ground. One on one here, but parked underneath it. They're able to take the mark, the territory side. And the little kick is pretty good. The runner going forward is McFarlane. Kicks it into the 50. So under pressure here, slung to the ground. The umpire says play on. Harley put a ton of air. He gets it. Bangs it through the big sticks. Another goal to the Territory. They needed that goal. Gets them back in front. So Harley put a ton of Mary, the Tiwi Island player. He's for Tiwi in the local competition. And he gets his first goal of the game. Yeah, that's a very much needed goal for the Territory. And that's their second goal for the quarter. Glenelg have kicked three this quarter. So um, they've... Uh, They've, they've had about a quarter of the Territory, but that's good. I know it's uh, getting close to time on, but the Territory needed that just for their own confidence and just, mm. just to sort of say, all right, we've got things back under control. What they need to do is they need to get possession and maintain it. Sometimes you don't have to move it fast, Tash. You can take your time you and keep it, it slow, but just it, it's play keepies off like we're playing under 10s or under 12s. And the tackle just to keep again possession. was Cameron Islet. The big tackle turn in the forward over. line to turn it over. So Territory back at five points in front. Kick from out of the middle was Colour down towards the 50 metre line. Wants Condon. Condon couldn't control the footy as it's pushed over the boundary line now to play. Siren imminent here at half time. Been a good quarter of footy. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you're watching. Boundary umpire having a look to call it, just come in a little bit, fellas. He might have been saying <laughs> to the rucks. Well, let the, the boundary umpire's got to come in himself. He's got to come in five metres. Yeah. It's like that. <laughs> Some hard work being done by Philo. Philo with the kick up towards the wing, rolls towards the boundary line. Hard chase there, Durden gets to it. Onto the right boot he goes. Can they get a mark down here? They can't. In the way, Philo again did pretty well. Glenelg a chance here. Siren not that far away. Territory side would not like to concede a goal here close to half time. Oh, good hands. Little handball was clever. Down towards the 50 metre line. Plenty of uh, black and yellow jumpers down there, but they can't get their hands on the footy. There's a stack that goes over the top. Now a little bit of spillage comes out. Well done, Mark Noonan. Let it go. Good stuff. Pushed it out the back door. Was pretty good. Still, they can't get clear <laughs> under real pressure. And still the pressure stays there. <laughs> Glenelg with the kick. Oh! Big climb over the top. Oh, oh, would it love for him to take that? Was <laughs> that was Vivi. That was Vivi. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the territory should he's, clear. So he, he's an excitement machine, oh, isn't he? Oh, he's, he's magnificent, isn't he? So he, played some, he played some great footy with Henry <laughs> Thunder. I remember when I was commentating the Thunder games and I reckon he won games off his own boot, Charlie. Mm. Tess. <laughs> So 5-2 to 4-3 at half time here. Territory <laughs> have come back into the game <laughs> oh, after trailing <laughs> for most of that quarter and they kicked a goal there right at the end of Harley Poor and Tatamiri put them in front. So they're up by five points at half time. 5-2 plays 4-3. Well, it's half time here at TIO Stadium and it's the NTFL with the narrow lead, 5-2-32, up against the Glenelg Tigers, 5-3-27. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to take this moment to thank our uh, partners, uh, 2021 Kazali's Australia Day Clash. It is the Kazali's Palmerston Club, who are not only one of AFL NT's premier partners, but also the naming rights partner of the newly resurrected NTFL representative game in 2021. We'd also like to take this time to thank integral sponsors who helped make today what it is. Of course, our naming rights sponsor, Kazali's Palmerston Club, major sponsor TIO, and of course, our NT representative squad player sponsors in LJ Hooker, De Silva Hebron, RMI Security and Plumbing NT, and of course, our broad Broadcast partners, NITV, Kick Digital, Mix 104.9 and Hot 100. It's half time here at TIO Stadium. It's the NTFL 5232. 
ahead of the Glenelg Tigers 5 3 27. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our halftime entertainment. He's back out in the rain, ladies and gentlemen. Would you please welcome Jackson DeSantis? Hello. Chopped up, he says I'm gonna win big Choose not the life of imitation Distant cousin to the reservation Debunk the piece of that you pay for Just punk the feeling that you stayed for In time I want to be a best friend East side love is living on the west end Knock out before you better come to Don't die, you know the truth is sub true Go write your message on the pavement Burn so bright, I wonder what the wave meant in the jungle, complete the motion if you stumble. Go us that us for any answers. Come back strong with 50 belly dancers. The world I love, the tears I drop to be part of the wave. Can't stop. Ever wonder if it's all for you. The world I love, the trains I hop to be part of the wave. Can't stop. Come and tell me when it's time to. Sweetheart is bleeding in a snow cone So smart she's leaving me to ozone Music, the great communicator Use these sticks to make it in the nature I'll get you into penetration The gender of a generation The birth of every other nation Could go right to go to meditation This chapter's gonna be a close one Small rings and now you're gonna blow one All on a spaceship as a fearing Use my hands for everything we're steering can't stop the spirits when they need you Mob tops are happy when they feed you J butterflies in the treats up birds that blow the meaning into be but the world I love the tears I try to be part of the wave can't stop ever wonder if it's all for you the world I love the trains I hop to be part of the wave can't stop Come and tell me when it's time to... Hey, there's a possum. Wait a minute, I'm passing out when i lose Just like you Far more shocking than anything I ever knew How about you? Ten more reasons why I need somebody new Just like you Far more shocking than anything I ever knew Right on cue Chopped up, he says I'm gonna win big Choose not a life of imitation Distant cousin to the reservation Defunct the pistol that you paid for Just punk the feeling that you stayed for In time I want to be a best friend East side love is living on the west end Knock out before you better come to Don't die, you know the truth is so true Go write your message on the pavement Burn so bright to wonder what the wave meant What's he doing? <laughs> Cheers. Does that sound all right? All right. I'll get this one in quick before. Uh, yeah, it's good to be here. Thank you. My name's Jackson. It's good to see people rocking up, even despite the weather. Good times. Woke up this morning from the strangest dream. I was in the biggest army 
the world has ever seen. We were marching as one on the road to the Holy Grail. Go and see! Started out seeking fortune and glory. It's a short song, but it's a hell of a story. When you spend your lifetime trying to get your hands on the Holy Grail. Well, have you heard about the great rule saying, when right into millions? But nobody got paid. Yeah, we raised four corners of the globe for the Holy Grail. Woo! All the uncles scattered, they were hiding in the snow. We were so far from home, so how do we know? There'd be nothing left to plunder. But we stumbled on the Holy Grail. We were full of beans, but we were dying like flies. And those big black birds, they were circling the sky. And you know what they said? Yeah, nobody deserves to die. There's a lot of people. This is scary. No, I, I've been searching for an easy way to escape this cold light of pain. I've been high and I've been low, but I got nowhere else to go. There's nowhere else to go. Oh! I felt honest. God knows where I've been. But I woke up alone on my wounds are clean. Cheers. Nice. Thanks, everybody. Actually. This one, sing along, it's good fun. Six years I've lived in the desert, and every night I dream of the sea. Say, home is where you find it. Will this place ever satisfy me? <laughs> For I come from the soul. I'm 
Second half just about to get underway. 11 points the margin at quarter time in favour of the Northern Territory team, but they are outscored three goals to two in that second quarter and the margin back to five points. Gilbert McAdam, thoughts on the first half and what's in store for us? Oh, look, I thought it was a very good first half. Obviously, the first quarter, the Territory dominated and um, um, they had three goals to uh, Glenelg one. Uh, in the second quarter, it was the other way, uh, other way, almost other way around. Glenelg had three, uh, Territory two goals. Seven scoring shots for the Territory, seven scoring shots for the Glenelg. So in terms of the scoring shots, the scores, it's pretty even. Um, I reckon if you look at the statistics, 50-50 at the moment, I thought that Territory dominated the first quarter, Glenelg the second quarter. The game's in the balance, there's no doubt about it. Interesting to see who were the first club that uh, ran out, or well, not club, the Territory side ran out first. Might be something in that. They might have just, you know, might be making a statement to Glenelg. When Glenelg run out, they're already out there. They're ready to play. Sometimes you can, it can uh, be used as mind games, just depending on the situation. But I reckon we're in for a ripper second half. Just little tactics, isn't it? That just, e yeah. Exactly. And, yeah. and Tash, if that gets you one point or one goal, you win by one point, one goal, it's, so it's, it's not a bad tactic, is it? So be it. I've heard coaches say that they keep them in the huddle, make them wait in their positions. You know, you just do do things to put mm. the opposition off. Yeah. It's all mind games as well. That's why coaching, it's, it's very stressful. Like. But, and, 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 and you don't even have to talk sometimes. You can just do things by your action. Yeah. And you walk away from your, from your opposition. And if he comes towards you, you walk different directions. So it's all about playing mind games. And I know I used to do it when I used to play, and I'm sure a lot of the players still do it today, Charlie. I'm sure of it. We're just watching the McBean there, number one. He's been dominant in the uh, forward 50 and, and there. Bailey's been good. Those two, number nine and number seven, Bailey and the Reynolds, Reynolds have both had plenty of the footy, haven't they? But the dis I, I, I like I, VV in the forward line. He's coming off mm. to start on the bench. Yep. I, yep. They started the they started the second half, uh, the second quarter with the, the tools in the forward line, VV and McBean. Yeah, thought yep. that that worked for them as well. Yep. So they're, yep. they're, they're going again with a different start to this. You, you, know what I'd, you know what I'd do if I was the grill coach? I'd put McBean centre half forward. I wouldn't be putting him full forward because it takes longer to get the ball down to there. And I reckon sometimes if he was at the centre half forward position to make a contest, I reckon he's going to win more possessions than not. I reckon sometimes he gets wasted because he's sitting in the goal square. Because how many times in wet conditions does the ball get down to the forward They're goal square that you. quick? He's listening to you. They've put Marlon Motlop at full forward and but they've moved him up just a little bit. Yeah, but they, he should come out further. He, he should be standing where the 50 metre line is, Tash. McBean, that's where he should be standing right now. So the umpire throws it up Hannah and Dennis. I'm away with Paridi, so he started this third quarter like he ended the second. Getting a lot of the footy. Matty Dennis goes in there again. Paredes goes running past, but can't get it out. Paredes does get it out. Kicked forward by Anchors. So one on one, both holding. The umpire lets it go. Harley put in ton of Mary with a snap. How is it going to bounce? Getting there is, I think that's Dalhouse. That was Jay Dalhouse. So it goes through for a behind. So good start to this third quarter for the Territory team. Let's see what they can produce the Glenelg defence, Charlie. So Tigers to bring it out. Here's the kick by uh, Jackson Edwards up towards uh, the half-back line. Taken off hands here by the Territory side. Little kick into Harley Purin Tatamere. He's a live wire forward and they're using him. Some pressure here too on Edwards. Gets the kick away. Out towards the 50 metre line. They've turned it over again. Pilot got it. Goes short with it. He rarely wastes the kick. This time he did. And they've cut it off back there deep in defence. The Tigers. Got a bit of patching on his cheek as well, Cam Islet, from that big tackle that he laid in the second quarter. Curran's kick, and they're reaching over the back. Good mark for the Territory side. They can bring this in. Short kick intended here for Searle. 
Gets onto the right boot from a long way out. Pumps it in long. Wants a mark. Plenty of players back there. Whistle's gone. Territory players on the ground. Suggest it's a free kick to go that way. And it is. Dirt, and he used his body, but the umpires pinged him for in the well, back. Well, the only thing that I can see is if he's that 10 metre rule. You know that 10 metre yeah, rule yeah. before mm -hmm. the ball gets there? That's the only reason I can see a free kick. Be we'll have to see the replay. Yeah, see it on replay because I thought that was... Well, it didn't look like a lot in attack, no, did it? No, So, Brett Eddy, a chance to add to his uh, goal that he's kicked. He's on a bit of an angle, but he's not that far out. He kicks it long, and he kicks it well, and he kicks it... Pretty well. They're happy with that. No, it's gone through it's for a minor a, score. Yeah, just Charlie. He, Brett, Brett Hattie, he's played 150 games for South Adelaide and Port Adelaide. He's been the leading goal kicker in 216 and 217, Charlie. He's been a, a great player, hasn't he? Yeah, he's a good player. Edwards with the kick out. Mark's taken by the Tigers player. And the rain's coming down, Tash. Yeah, it's starting to get a little bit heavier. Yes. No breeze, which is good. And as I say, that it goes out of bounds on the full. But there is no breeze out there. Free kick going to Josh Cabillo. Had a great career in the South Australian footy comp, Josh Cabillo. They're going back here, looking to switch the play of the territory. No, he goes back up towards centre wing. Cameron Islet has to fumble the footy. You don't see it very often. Good pick up by Marlon Motlock. For the free kick going the way of the Tigers. Give it back to Marlon here. So Motlock kicks it forward. McBean. In the position where Gilly wants him to be, further up where the footy will land. And a good kick away there by the Territory team at the back here is Paredes. Cabillo goes in with a big hit, went without the footy. So Glenelg are going to come away with it with Partington. Partington kicks it in at the back of the pack here is Reynolds. Reynolds goes, a good pick up front and centre. And a kick off the side of his boot is McBean. Was that McBean? No. That is Lockie Hosey. So he's kicked the goal for Glenelg to start this third quarter. So well done. That was quality. So, so, you know what I loved about it, Tash? The quick kick in. Get the ball in quick. They got it in the quick. He brings it down to ground. Well done for bringing it down. Front and square. Cyril Boy Junior Rowley. Oh, <laughs> Magnificent, isn't it, eh? Hey? If only we could see him running around well, in the Territory Colours. Well, when I see stuff like that, it just reminds me of him, how good he is. And, um, no, nah, good goal for, for uh, yeah. Glenelg. Well, that's the first goal for the quarter, Charlie. So that's an interesting start. That's a good start. So let's see what they can do out of the middle this time. Good tackle. Oh, he's pinned him. I think that was the first goal that's been a front and square inside the Ford 50. Yeah, I reckon you're right. Gilly, I reckon you're right. It, it, so handball off to the running Lant. Lant is tackled. He goes to ground. That's holding the footy. His advantage paid. It is Motlop. Gives it to McBean. McBean. It's going to get chopped off. Just an errant kick there. Just a poor turnover. So Territory have the numbers. Gives it to Dennis. Dennis gives it back to his teammate Lant. Coming across the pack is McFarlane. An old player needed to hit that, that footy. I've been impressed with McFarlane's games so far tonight, Tash. Yeah, he's a running machine. I reckon he'll go close to uh, winning the best and fairest for the local season up here, Dane McFarlane. And close to the boundary line that goes out of bounds for a boundary throw-in. Yeah, he's always in the contest, Dane McFarlane. Probably a little bit quiet for his standards, but watch the second half. I reckon Jared seems to be around the middle, around the centre. I reckon they put Jared um, Stokes in the middle. I reckon that's a good move. On the ball, you reckon? Well, yep. just make that physical presence because he's such a big unit. You know what I mean? Like, it just makes other people think before they go for the ball. So, hey, Bankers trying to get the footy out. Gets it through McFarlane. Over to Cetus. Cetus kicks around his body blindly. Ball knocked towards the boundary line and go out of play. Five minutes into the third term. Point the difference. Territory in front, 34 to 33. We have an arm wrestle again, isn't it? It is. this third quarter. It's very similar to the first quarter, you're right. Hosey with that goal, taken out of uh, the air there by Jack Hanneth. VV. Mark. Here's VV. Onto the right boot he goes. Upsets it to the one-on-one. -on -one. Support got there in a hurry for the Territory side. They have numbers there. McLean goes to ground under pressure. Gets it out wide. Kick will go forward here. And a good mark taken by Dane McFarlane. Tried to play on, caught in the tackle. Handball was good. They scrambled the kick to the middle of the ground. 
numbers here for the Territory side. If they can get the hands on the footy, they'll have the numbers, but they didn't. And Glenelg have it and caught in a tackle, and they fall on top of him, and the ball goes to ground. Umpire comes in to ball it up. Point the difference. Good close game of footy here at uh, the Marara Stadium in Darwin. So Hannah Dennis comes from behind and punches it, but it's chopped off by the Tigers player. Reynolds in front, punched away from him. And there's that man, Jared Stokes. So overran the footy, but goes back. Good tackle laid by Reynolds. Pick up by Cameron Islet. Needs to get rid of it. He took them all on. It should be holding the footy. It is. So you can see the patchwork on his cheek there, Cameron Islet. It was good, good pressure for, them, for Geelong players. They, he was gang tackled, three tackles. It's good to see three tacklers as well. It just shows the intensity that the Tigers have started this third quarter with. So the two Tigers players, no communication there. Both went for the footy. VV on the ground. Tries to hit it to the advantage of his teammate. But Anchors was there. Matty Dennis is camped underneath it. So Dennis, what can he do? Goes back. Anchors. Sit forward, but it's going to be chopped off. That's good hands there. By the Tigers, and they're looking to switch the play. They're on here. They can kick it over the top to Hannah. He goes further afield to Hosey, the goal kicker for this quarter, and just puts it to the top of the 50, and VV was caught behind. And that's where you want McBean to be. He's got to make a presence, and he's got to start letting the blokes up the ground know, just kick it to me. So Bowles with the kick went long, gave it straight to Parid. He's got a goal in the second term. He's out on the wing, and he pumps it down to half forward. Knocked away there. Gave a chance for the player running onto oh. a Toby Pink. He goes to ground. I think he's drawn a free kick. No, he hasn't. I think he has. It's getting a little <laughs> the crowd are getting rough out there. Charlie. That's good. We love a bit of passion. <laughs> we we love passion. Pink's got the free kick. That's all that matters <laughs> for Glenelg. He's inside defensive 50. Sends it along the wing. Oh, good and mark. Vivi just floating in from the side. With his shorts coming down. He's looking for somewhere to go. And now he goes with it. Oh, that's a great mark, isn't it? Just sliding in. Terrific mark taken there by Newman. Chips it backwards, gives it off to McLean. McLean across half back. Links it up through Lant. Lant on the run. Good playing defence back there for the Territory side. And they're still controlling the footy here at the moment. Not much longer, though. Good work there by Partington. Little short kick inside 50. Just a little touch on it. Hot, hurried kick there by Bailey. Down towards a vacant goal line. They got back in defence, fortunately, and knocked it through for a minor score. Scores level. 5-4 apiece at the nine-minute mark of the third term. So Shawnee Edwards with the mark in the back pocket. Just kicks it up. Looking for Dennis. Dennis two against one. At the back is Bates. Bates kicks Ooh. it off the ground. Probably should have picked it up. He was in a bit of space. Trying to get the ball out. Abe anchors with an up and under kick. Doesn't gain much meterage. And now they've Ooh. open space here. A good kick by Sewell. But it goes out of bounds. A good thump. You, you, you mentioned Shorty Edwards before. Yep. I'd like them now to make a move with him and I'd put him on the ball because he's a player. When he plays at St Mary's, he, he sets the play up for them. I reckon they need someone with a bit of direction. He's got a lot of experience, Sean Edwards. I reckon they need to put him on the ball. Just to direct that traffic. There yeah, doesn't seem to be that happening through the stoppages, does there? And he's a leader. And he's a, he's a, and, he, and he's got a very good footy brain. He knows what he's doing. I like the way he plays. He can make an impact. He can't do it in the back line. So Eddie and Vivi are, are involved in that ruck contest. And the ball sliding over the boundary line there in the hands of uh, Brady Searle. You know, just, just give him five minutes, Tash, Charlie. Just That's give, all. Give just, him a top. He doesn't have to there. go there for about 10, 20 minutes. Just go five minutes, have a break, see what happens. He might set up a goal. He might kick a goal. No one's really dominating through the... Well, you've got to try. If, if nothing's happening, you've got to try something, Tash. Otherwise, it's, 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 it's going to be stagnant. So here's Territory with a bit of a chance. A hurried kick forward. I like the fist defensive work that, that Glenelg the gives back there in defence, don't they? They get there and right. punch it to the boundary line. And when they punch it, they punch it. Yeah, they knock Whereas it Whereas our blokes, our blokes punch it, but they don't punch it as hard yeah. with that intent that the Glenelg players do. It yeah, puts their fingers and their wrists under a bit of pressure, I can tell you that. So this is the third contest between these two. <laughs> Eddie and Vivi. Vivi did pretty well out of that. That's oh, a heavy I tackle. Good hit. 
kick oh. with oh. huge climb. <laughs> it was only his own teammate. Sat. <laughs> Sat. Thomas Boyd, that was. What a, what a jump. McLean goes without it. The umpire's found a free kick. It's going the way of the territory. So Cetus, long way out. He's a look for a teammate, and he had one of those, but just took a while to get there. Turnbull dropped the mark. They've got the numbers here, the Tigers. So you're just going to cut it off. Good punch. Attack that footy again, that punch. So game tackle there was Martini. So Philo belts it to the top of the square, one-on-one. -on -one. The umpire let it go. Tackled was McCarthy, and the umpire is going to ball it up. McCarthy was tough in there, wasn't he? Look at that hit, Charlie. Josh Cabillo. <laughs> wow. Thomas Board got up there. Ball up. Just fighting for it here. It's in a dangerous position. Cedis has it. He can't get rid of it. They're calling the umpire. The umpire let it to go. And it's going to be another ball up, Charlie. Let's see if you can clear this stop. Get it out of there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all the game in the 12 and a half minutes gone. Third term scores level. Look at the amount of players there. Oh, it's hard to get you. You just got to get people outside that pressure area, don't you? If it comes out, get to it. There's McLean under pressure there. Couldn't get it. No one's going to bring that out. Numpire will come in and ball it up at the 50 metre line again. Usually they can pick a free kick out of these these situations, can't they? Well, out in, in, look, just really into this game. That's when you need to play. They can make something out of nothing, Charlie. Yeah. And just and just change the uh, change the state of the game. Just yeah, below there, just probably a little bit too ferocious in that tackling, but he's really putting his body on the line now, Josh Kibillo, just trying to make a bit of a difference out there. And Curran got the free kick, so he can clear it here for the Bays. So Curran, McBean, is going to drop short. McFarlane got hands to it. Cleared by the Tigers. Does it get out the back? No, that's a good mark taken there by Thomas Boyd. Nearly took a screamer before. Newman's calling for it. He's got players on. Brew was third in line, juggled the mark, but the umpire said it was touched on the way through. Philo moves it forward. Here's Paredes, actually clever. He keeps it in, two on one, Eddie's underneath it. And the free kick is going the way for the defender, and that's Max Proud. So the skipper, 10 years with Glenelg, he's been. Goes short with the kick and gives it off to Edwards. Edwards dribbles it inside, defensive 50. Kick didn't work well for him. Now they'll get out of trouble. Out towards a good kick. the boundary line, and the mark was taken by McBean. Two goals from this big man. It's a good kick of the footy. Look at that. Dangerous, dangerous, Charlie. That's oh. a high tackle. But he's getting he's getting up the ground, McBean, so he's getting, That's right. getting involved. And, and before, he, he punched the ball, went front and square. They got it got it into the, the forward line. That's what he's got to do. If he don't take the mark, bring it to ground bring for the crummers. So they picked up another free kick here. This is a, a Condon. Condon goes short and gives it off to Marlon Motlop. He can go short again if he wants. He had Edwards there. He didn't go to him. He went longer with the kick. Oh. And bounced off the chest of uh, Klusky down there. It's inside the 50 metre line for Glenelg. Territory under some pressure. Stack over the top again and they'll hold it up. Umpire will come in and ball it up. Wow, the pressure, you can feel it from up here, can't you? It, it's Five, good. six, seven, eight players over the top of the ball. Well, everyone knows this is the third quarter. This third quarter is going to set you up for the last quarter, Tats. So it's so important that whoever can probably be in the, in the lead at three-quarter time might have a chance of winning the game. Premiership quarter. But Marlon. Marlon Motlop just with a shot on goal goes through for a behind. It was in the clear. They can play on here. The Territory team gets it to that man, Shawnee Edwards. Gilly wants him to have a run in the middle. Hopefully we see him in there. Kicks it over the top to a teammate in Dylan Lant. Now what's Lant got on there? All one-on-ones everywhere. Brody Philo's calling for it. Goes further afield. And Hannah kicked it straight to the big Ruckman, but it was touched on the way through. Oh, I don't know who happened? touched that, <laughs> but he called play on. Didn't seem like... Well, the guy on the mark must have touched it. Otherwise, there was no one else that would have touched it, Tash. So. so the umpire is explaining to the big ruckman, Hannah, he wasn't sure what went on. So the free kick going the way of Matty Dennis. 
holding him without the ball was the call from the umpire. So Matty Dennis, now he's just backward of the, the wing or the centre line, linked it up through McFarlane. Kick was OK to Brew. And Brew on the left boot, pumps it inside 50, wants a big mark down here, but the fist was there again from Glenelg. They've been fisting the ball away. Stokes onto the loose ball, snaps it goal from a long way out and kicks the goal. Big goal for the Territory side. Very much needed one too, Charlie. And you heard the crowd when he kicked it. And that's what we need now. We need the Territory and we need the supporters to start getting a bit more louder now so that when we get a goal, we can hear them. And they need to, um, yeah, and just support the team because um, they, they kick front and square again. That's yep. No, Jared, he's a classy footballer. There's no doubt about it. And good to see him kick a goal. He, is. he read that well, didn't he? I mean, he knew that Fist was going to knock the ball from the fence. Big family name as well, the Stokes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, well, that's Frankie's son. You know, obviously Frank played NRL with Manly and, well, I'm related to him. He's my nephew as well and, you know, my mum's a Stokes, so they're very close to our family, that's for sure. Back in the middle, trying to get it out. So now we'll probably need the next goal here just to stay in it. Marlon Motlop kicked it forward, taken there by Ch Chandler, comes out, picked up, good hand pass. Look at the intensity, he's just lifting. So he's back, the umpire says, give it to me. So 18 minutes gone in this first quarter. Territory leading by five points. It's in the forward 50 for Glenelg. It's the kick out. Already Philo falls over at the critical time. So Glenelg, kick it back in. It's to the back, close to the boundary. Reynolds tries to keep it in, he does. And the umpire, Cameron Eilich, just sitting on his opponent and he's called. So the free kick is going the way of Cameron Eilich for the Territory team, Charlie. Yeah, out of defence they come. Oh. 18 and a half minutes gone in the third term. Here's the run from Simon Bates, plays for Wanderers in the local competition. He's had a good year this year. Good pressure. Yeah. Inside 50. Handball has to go back to Brew. And then out through Turnbull. And Turnbull kicking long. Misses out to the right. Comes up with a minor score. They can move it quickly, Glenelg. Yeah, they've got VV on out here. Charlie's just come on. So VV will take the uncontested mark. Runner on. Good mark taken by Hosey. Hosey looking for McBean. McBean drops the mark. Looking for a free kick, but it was good defensive work there by the Territory team. So boundary throw in right in front of the Territory interchange. Wait for the Ruckman to come and set for this throw in. So Hannah and Dennis. Battle of strengths. So none of them read it. Hit the ground. Cedars picks it up. Goes out wide to Bowles. Bowles again. Hand passes it. Cleans there. Can't pick it up. Now Glenel come in numbers. Need to move it on. Got a spare player out there. Can kick it into the forward line. Marlon Motlop takes the mark. Does he play on? He does. He has a shot on goal. And he's kicked it. He's kicked the goal for Glenel. Oh, it's equal, I think. Yes, it's Oregon. And you think the Territory would have kicked that goal, but that's obviously the Motla family we can hear, and well done. That's a great <laughs> goal. And no, that's great. That's what we want. It's, it's brilliant. And um, Just numbers in the just, end. Just when you think the, the Territory going to get some momentum, Charlie, the scores will level again, yeah. once again. This is a good quarter. This is a brilliant game. Great quarter, great quarter. <laughs> All the balance. Want. All well, the, the balance in the world. Well, in, in the first half, both sides kicked three goals going down this end. I think there's only been one goal kicked this end at the airport end so far. So it's not uh, a We're lot of... Raining. It's not raining goals, is it, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> 20 and a bit minutes gone. Almost three-quarter time here. Scores level again. Ooh. So Glenel come out of the middle. They've got the clearance. Inside 50, it's a deep kick at front position knocked away towards the boundary line vv doing all that hard work down there some desperate work laid on by uh hosey down there and a little kick is going to roll through for a minor score 
And Charlie, for the last five minutes, I noticed, Tash, that it's raining. Not a lot raining, but it's an annoying rain. It's mm. annoying. So McLean <laughs> plays on. Those ones where you don't know whether you want your windscreen wipers on or not. That's all <laughs> yeah. the rain. One's Turnbull, but it's 50. So Marlon... Motlop, I think, went over the mark, so that's a 450 to give away. Pretty now he needs to get out the way because he could give away another one. Geez, that's a big 50 compared to the other one. Wow. See. That's a massive 50. So VV stands. Might be a mark. territory 50. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not biased. <laughs> <laughs> Spillage out here <laughs> towards Chandler, and he can't uh, keep it in the field of play. Not long left in this quarter either. Siren this imminent. This is great. This is going to get the crowd right involved in this last quarter. Really looking forward to it. But still not over yet, Charlie. We might get a goal from someone before the break. Here's the throw in at the 50 metre line. Territory in attack. They get a kick inside 50. Can they get a mark down here? Oh, it's good punch, effort. Yeah. Yeah. Great punch. again. Great off the ground outside 50. Oh. Another kick off the ground. Kick around the body there from Scharenberg. VV again. Reynolds there as well. Tap as well off the ground. Searle looking for it, can't get it. Little push out through Bates. They're on here. Two. Running forward. This is Partington. Kicked it straight to the defender down there. Charlie, he had 10 metres. No one around him. He could have had a, two bounces and walked in and kicked the goal. <laughs> Good of his oh. handball out to McFarlane. Is it easy? Is it not easy up here or not? <laughs> I wish I was on the ground. <laughs> so, siren goes. Three quarter time. Oh. Don't go anywhere. Six, oh. six to six, five. Glenelg up by a point. Is Brett Han? What's the plan? Well, the good, po big positive about him being the coach is he's coached in Darwin. He knows the football. He knows everything. He's the reason. I, I don't know what he said. Well, it's court. three quarter time here at TIO Stadium, court, and it is just a point in it with NTFL six five forty one just trailing the Glenelg Tigers at six six forty two. A big fourth quarter of footy here coming up at TIO Stadium. Of course, don't forget this is the first Northern Territory representative game of footy in fifteen years. Can the Buffs draw, come back for the win? We'll find out with the fourth quarter about to get underway. But once again, it is three-quarter time here at TIO Stadium. Then TFL the 6541, trailing the Glenelg Tigers 6642. Yeah, yeah. But, but you'd, you'd want it to have an outcome. Have a result. Of, yeah, uh, have a winner. Tough call. What, what would you do? Play extra time? Three minutes each way. Yeah. A bit like the golden point ball with yeah, the yeah. NRL. Don't let so the first score win. You, no, no. It's got to be three minutes, three minutes. I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that. No. Yeah, I don't like it either. So, Gilly, Territory kicked three goals to one in the first quarter, and then Glenelg kicked three goals to two, and then two goals to one. So, you were right. They've won two of the quarters, haven't they? Exactly. Glenelg have won the second and third quarters. Territory won the first quarter. Whereas, and, but if you look at it, percentage of the whole three quarters, Territory probably had more possession than Glenelg. Yeah. I reckon Territory, we wasted a lot of the ball. Yeah. And we we seem to be going around a bit more, whereas Glenelg, I, I notice they get, they're going more direct. And McFarland, that's why I'm saying McFarland sent our forward, because he can, he can make them play more centre instead of going around the ground. But right. the quickest home on this ground is goal to goal. Don't muck around where we are doing the commentary on the wings or where the scoreboard is. Safest way arm, quickest way arm, straight down the middle. Go down the middle. Umpire in the middle. Having a look around. In about 20 minutes from now, maybe 25 minutes from now, we're going to have a result here. So the rain's just still falling. Get us away, Tash. And Dennis, Hannah, neither Ruckman can win it. That by Gunnell, taken high, the umpire has called it. So the free kick going the way of the Tigers. We're going to get it into the forward 50 first in this last quarter, but it's a player on the mark. Can't look at sin that for a coach killer. Good tackles put on. Comes at the back. Bean gets there first. He's taken high. The umpire says, give it to me. 
There's a few players pleading there from both teams, but the umpire's going to ball it up, 55. They, they gang-tackled him. They did. And, 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 and if you noticed, they've opened it up so they've spread out more, yeah. and it's not so congested where the contest is. That's a good move. So Hannah won it, but went straight to Philo, out here to Martini. Marlon Motlock gives it back to Martini. They've got the numbers here, the territory. It's at long. There is Paredes, a one-on-one -on -one at the back. Going to mop up here is Yates. So Yates with a hand pass over the top. Got a spare player run, but he drops the footy. Sure. Gee, don't fumble. And it's going to be costly because there's a turnover. Luckily, the mark is taken there by Colour. So Colour gets onto the left boot, squeezes it across the field. They can go forward from here up towards the half forward line. Out of position, but getting there late was Liam McBean, two time Ken Farmer medalist. Charlie gets over the top and ball held When up. McBean goes for, goes for the ball, he's got to have an in-under player running with him. They can't have not known anyone because the ball's going to hit the ground. There's no numbers there. So he's got to have a smaller player running up the ground when he does. So he takes the ball out of the air, Hanneth. Tried to get it away. Stolen this time, though, by Turnbull. Pumps it up towards half forward. Knocked back into the centre of the ground. Oh, good Big tackle. tackle. He's tough, isn't he, Jews? Shot got the handball <laughs> away under pressure. Up towards half forward. McBean looking for it. Didn't take the mark. That's a high tackle, is it? Umpire says no. And he'll ball it up at the 50-metre line. That was a good tackle, Charlie, because they had three on two then. Pressure, Grinnell. pressure really building here. <laughs> and Hannah the Ruckman for Grinnell just chucked his boot away, so he's only got one boot on. <laughs> and I think he's given away the free kick. So Matty Dennis. Who's got two boots on. He's got <laughs> two. So he kicks it out. Philo. Philo's got a bit of time here. She got up forward. One-on-one -on -one going to Eddie. And it goes over the boundary line, the boundary throw, and been a good match up there, Brett Eddy and Max Proud, the captain. Yeah, of that, I reckon that's been the best contest on the ground so far, and they're obviously two experienced players, and they know each other very well. Yeah, exactly. I love watching contests like that. And keeping Eddy down to one goal is a good effort. That's a great effort. Yeah, and both have the right strength for each other as well. Yeah, because he's been in form, Eddy. He's been yeah. getting a lot of goals, hasn't he? Yep. Straight into the hands this time of Bro Brody Philo. <laughs> That fist, double fist from back there. Harley Poor and Tatamiri, can he keep it in the field of play? He was over the top of the footy and it was knocked out of play. Just what, what look at, uh, what, what's his name, Poor and Tatamiri? Yeah, he's drawn a free kick. When, when I look at him, Charlie, I, I, I would have loved to have seen a couple of more speeches like him in, in the territory side. Yeah. Because I reckon we've got too many plotters. I don't know if that's a fair judgment, but that's just my opinion. We just need a bit of explosiveness just to break it up. We've got the big bodies, but not that. that we need that explosive the, yeah. pace. So Harley Purantata Mary, what can he do with it? Kicks it goals. A good looking kick right down towards the goal line. Got the line right, but uh, it was carried over by the defenders. So a point that were sco uh, scored and puts uh, Territory in front. Dangerous kick out. So the numbers are here for the Territory. Dane McFarlane, pick it up. Good shepherd by Josh Cabillo there to give McFarlane more time. Oh, and Harley put it on a Mary. Just this his hand there in disgust because he knew he probably should have attacked that one. Yeah. Just waited for it to come and Glenelg were able to hit it. Searle was, was good, wasn't he? got there with the fist again. But, but I think in fairness, the kick wasn't really Didn't right have at him. Yeah. No, he kicked power. it too high. He floated it. If he stabbed at it, he would have got him. Rockman go hard at it. Hands there by Philo. Mark this if you can. John Hyers. Cheetahs is there. Picks it up. He's going to have a shot on goal. Has he kicked it? He has. Cheetahs has the goal. Um, the territory needed that one. So the territory. Go ahead by six points here. Good goal, Cheetahs. Oh, oh, look, this is what they need a tash. That's what we want to hear. We want to hear the crowd because we've got the home ground advantage. You know, hopefully it's a goal or a two goal advantage and they win by a goal or two goals. They need the crowd to support them now and the crowd, somebody should get them going. Get the microphone out, Tash. Start talking to them. Get them pumped up. <laughs> oh, I'd stick my head out the window, but there's no window here. <laughs> so here's Cedars. Look, he just he steps. Great goal, Charlie. Get some Charlie. space. Look at that. And really, Jackson Edwards should have came hard at him. Deep he in the pocket too. And from the impossible angle, converts. Made something out of nothing. Won the premiership with the Tigers and then crossed over to Southern Districts this season. Had a pretty consistent season as well. Two number 44s in battle. 
Kick forward there by Matty Allen. Handball came out well that time by again by Matty Dennis. It's having a good game, Matty Dennis. Here's the kick down towards half forward. Punched away. Territory players with plenty of run now. They're a goal in front. Another one's going to be crucial. Ball punched to ground. Glenelg can get to it. Can't quite pick it up. Lands in the hands there this time of Jared Stokes. Kick down inside the 50 metre line to the goal line and the clearing kick comes away by the skipper. Max Proud. So it's Brady Searle. Kicks it in board. Sharon Berg. Just slowing things down here, Glenel. Possession footy they've got to play, Tash. Possession. It's a poor kick and it's chopped off. So Territory going to put the De Glenel defenders under pressure again. Boots it in. And from the back, Glenel have the numbers. Running through the defence was Brad McCarthy. It's McBean. It's class, isn't he, McBean? Marlon Motlops ran forward, switches the play. It's a poor kick. Butters up, gives it to McCarthy. McCarthy drives it long into the 50. Caught at the back is Marlon Motlop. Cheetahs picks it up. Goal kicker. Gets it out wide. Jared Stokes here with his pace. Look at McBean going with him as well. <laughs> the big fella. He's done well to get there with the pressure oh, well on Jared Stokes, just the skills in these conditions. And Matty Dennis. I had him as my uh, best on ground, Charlie, before the game started. Matty Dennis kicks it out wide to McLean. McLean further refilled to Seal. Seal kicks it in looking for Eddie, and there's that match up again. It goes over the back. Still kept in. Simon Bates watches to go out of bounds, so boundary throw in. Well done by Jared Strokes then to turn that ball over, because he was the only one by himself, and he beat two Glenelg players, Mc McBean and the other fella, and he. If they go down and score, that's that's just good. That's great. Deep in the territory, forward line it is. Oh. Ball taken. Just couldn't quite get the kick away. That was cheetahs coming through there, Charlie. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, he's, yeah. that. <laughs> he's a battering ram, isn't he? They play similar, don't they? Uh, Cedars and Paredes. Free kick picked out of this. It's going to go to Glenelg. Charlie, Oric and umpires have done a good, great job this evening. Yeah. They, they have. They, they haven't made too many mistakes. They've done a great job. They've let it flow. Oh, that's what they I love about free, it. Make yeah. them earn. Because I, I, I don't like when players get free when they shouldn't. Yep. You've got to earn free kicks. Here's uh -huh. another one. Anchors, I think that is. Abe Anchors. There's a little knock on to Abe Anchors. Plays for Federals in the CAFL. I was going to say, we'll claim it, Charlie. He's an Ellis Springs <laughs> player <laughs> out there. and Now, nah, look, he's been great for Federals Footy Club. He's, he's a good his, his father or his brother coaches him as well, and he was a part of the Territory Thunder. So he's been a part of Territory football for the last 10 years, this Abers, Abers, he, uh, Anchors, and he he's been, been a star. He's been a star. Yeah, he might have been captain of Thunder for a, yeah, for a while, too. Yeah, he was, Charlie. And two times Minahan medal. Well, he's very unlucky not to get an opportunity in the draft. I know there was a lot of talk about him getting picked up as a rookie, but it uh, just goes to show how hard it is to be drafted in, 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 at the AFL level. But, gee, he's been a great ornament to Territory footy. Don't worry about that. Glenelg need the next goal. So Drew gets it back to McFarlane. McFarlane over to the goal kicker and Anchors. Went without that one. They need to put the pressure on here. The Tigers gets over the back. There's that man, Jared Stokes. Hand passes it to Anchors. Anchors finds McFarlane. McFarlane plays on quickly and kicks it to a player all by himself, and that's Cheetahs. So already kicked a goal in this quarter. He's a noted goal kicker. You can see the rain falling there on the screen. The way it's going, this is going to be the first quarter that's been more goals up that end. The Michael Long Centre. Then, then, Charlie, the airport. then Charlie's in. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> thought I'd mention it, Charlie. Cheetahs <laughs> comes in, looks good off the boot, and just threw yeah. for a ball. But that's good because then we Territory boys win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. <laughs> the 12. Oh, that, that, that point might, might actually help. Yeah, 13 points. 13 points in front. They've got to score three times to win. They've all got to be goals. And three goals in the wet, that's not, yeah, it's not easy. 
kick that didn't get away. Preeti's kick. It's pretty good down towards the forward line. Whistle gone, free kick and to I, Glenelg in defence. And of course, Glenelg's in their pre season, so they might run out of legs compared to the Territory That's players point, that are right at the end of their season. So Great point, great point. So Durden's kick. Match condition, they yep. definitely match condition. Yeah. Just see some of the Tigers players just running a little bit flat, heavy legs. Jill, you wouldn't want to count the turnovers. Charlie, like the there's, been, there's been that many turnovers. It, that, that's probably been the disappointment of the match. But not I'm saying the game's been a, the game's been a great game, but just the turnovers, just too many. Good tackle, picked up by Harley. Harley. Tana Murray has got a goal already. Snaps on goal and it goes through for a behind. So another behind. They're peppering the goals now, the territory team. It's that famous Tiwi name, Purantata Mary. There's been a few great ones over the years. Well, I played with uh, Graham Purantata Mary at uh, Waratahs. Right. So uh, I've seen a, quite a few champion Purantata Marys over the years. Patrick was a good one. Good kick up the line here, but numbers again for the Territory team. That was Lance. Lance kick goes back to McLean, back to Bowles. Bowles is usually a good delivery of the footy and good kick. Cool. Good hits kick. Newman. He's a lovely kick at the footy, is Bowles, and that's his own play. I, was gonna, I thought he was going to give the 50, but no, he's called it back. So Brody Newman plays for Wanderers. It's his first season up here in the Territory, playing very good footy as well for the Muck Mucks, as they're known. Kicks to Edwards. Had, did exactly what he did when he was called back to do it again, and here's Edwards' kick. Up towards the 50 metre line, big fist from the back, knocks the ball to ground, forced out of play. 12 and a half minutes gone, Territory out by a couple of goals. It's looking very flat, the Tigers, it's running out a bit of puff. It, it, it's, it's still raining, Tash, it's been raining like this the whole of the last quarter, Charlie. Yeah, you don't get a just, sense just of it. Just a little bit, not biggest mob, but... Heavy legs, he yeah. heavy legs playing this game. So Vivi at the bank gets a tap down. Hurried kick came from Brody Philo down towards the pocket. The defence under real pressure here from uh, Glenelg and they've given away a free kick. Oh no, it's a Glenelg free kick. Deep in defence, Jack Yates. Turned it over straight into the hands of Cam Islet. Dangerous man to give it to because he doesn't waste a kick and nor did he waste that one. Gave it to uh, Jay Dalhouse. Takes the mark on his chest. Yeah, Cameron's just played his usual game. Well, it, mm. You know, he's been a great campaigner for Territory football for the last 15 years. And he's led by example today. He's, he's obviously the skipper of the side. And yeah. I just love watching him play. And so we, we all love watching Champion. him play because we know how much heart he's got. He puts all his heart and soul into, into every game he plays. Not beyond Dalhouse, this. There's his kick. He's got plenty on it. Right to the line. Fished it through for a minor score. 57 plays 42, so 15 points the margin. The kick going down the corridor now. What they need to do, the Tigers, but Josh Cubillo gets the ball out to Islet, Islet. On the kick in, Territory boys go forward again. Picked up by Turnbull. And he's caught holding the footy, so the free kick. Tigers, the switch of play will go down the corridor again. Dangerous kick, but pays off. Good mark there by Hosey. Spots up a player, got a player running fast. Good pressure applied there by the Territory team. Just fell over at the crucial part there, the Tigers player. Hand passes to no man's land. Coming through was there, Cameron Island. Just clever play to Shawnee Edwards. Shawnee Edwards kicks it up to Paredes. Paredes one on one. Good work there by McCarthy for the Tigers. Gives it to Marlon Motlop. Motlop with just a short kick, but missed his target. Cameron Island's dragged off the footy and earns the free kick, does the captain of the Territory team. Been on the end of a few of those. Clever player, Cameron Island. Here's his kick. He's going to turn it over, I think. It's going to be definitely a free kick here to Glenelg, and they can go with the kick, and Braden McLean gets it. And then he goes across field and gives it off to another 
Territory player who can just chip it into the middle of the ground and find uh, McFarlane. Yeah, they can just chip it around now, can't they? They're in front. Enjoy the occasion here. Lance. Just over the head of Martini. Goes out of bounds right where the territory interchange is. So boundary throw in. Can see players from both teams here very very tight hands on hand. Ah, <laughs> uh, look, they've, they've put a lot of effort in, into tonight's game, and it's been a good game to test. It so has. eventually they were going to uh, run out of legs, that's for sure. Marlon Motlock comes through, quick kick, Lance there, drives it forward. It's a bounce, attacking the footy there was A Bankers. Putting a bit of pressure on was Turnbull. And another stoppage. So many stoppages in this game, these conditions. It's going to be some weary bodies there tonight and tomorrow. Ball up, big reach over the top. And this kick uh, here by A Bankers down to the goal line. Knocked through clearly there by uh, Max Proud. He's been good, the skipper, he's back been, there in defence. He's one of their better players. Oh, he's a terrific player. He's, he's, he's their spiritual leader, Charlie, down at the back line. And him and Eddie's had a great duel. And it's been brilliant to watch. Oh, oh step oh. around it, oh. A Bankers. Goes for goal and misses out <laughs> to the right. It was too easy in the end. <laughs> no, you've got to look the people that are here tonight. I don't know what sort of crowd we've got, but they should be all proud of the way the game's gone. Yeah. You know, both sides have put a lot of heart and soul into the into the game. It's it's been a really good spectacle to watch as a spectator. I've really enjoyed the game so far. It's been great. At the back here, Philo broke the tackle there, got that kick away. The other important thing is that there's been no injuries yet. So yeah, and, and that's what we want, Tash. You know, that's the last thing we need. So Turnbull keeps it in, gets it to Stokes. And taken over the boundary line there by Condon. So yeah, that, that's the important thing as well for both teams. No injuries. Mm. There's been a lot of intensity in the game, but sort of no ill feelings or anything like that. Nah. There's been no scraps or... Well, at, at, that, at this level of footy, you don't have that nastiness anyway, no. because the players are more professional, they're more switched on. It doesn't happen at this level. It used to. <laughs> well, that was back in the old days, before they changed all the rules, Tash. So they changed the rules now, so we have to play in the way they want us to play, unfortunately. Oh, I used to love the Bifford Gardens Oval. <laughs> well, I played in that era, so I know what you're talking about. Don't worry, I'll cop a few myself. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll go by the free kick there for that high tackle. It's I won't free. mention any names either. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I talk. My, my, my trade from Charlie. Them back then. <laughs> <laughs> to McFarlane and on to Matt Dennis. Oh, and Dennis cool. went looking for uh, anchors but couldn't get it to him. Stokes gets to the footy. He gets caught in the tackle by Chandler. He's been good. I've really enjoyed his game so far. And handball here to McFarlane. McFarlane Brilliant. loads up from a long way back out. Punched away by the defence back there. Just trying to get, desperately trying to get that ball out to Philo. Oh yeah, free kick to Anchors just... Fell yeah, he fell over the top. So, <laughs> free kick to uh, Bradley Sell. I was mentioning Brew before. I reckon he's got a contender for the man of the match, and him along with Cameron Islet. It's going yep. to be interesting who they go. And um, even even uh, Paredes, he's been terrific as well. So, it's going to be interesting how that develops. McFarlane, he's been great. So, Philo, the hand pass to Martini. Hannah, but Daniel Bowles. Dennis the Brig Ruckman, he's been terrific as well, Tash. You've called him a few times. Yeah, I thought he's been consistent throughout the four quarter. Shawnee Edwards drives it forward. It's a good kick into space, but he can't get there before the boundary. It was the only time he didn't have Proud hot on his hammer. Yeah, he got away, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he's kicked us the one tonight, uh, Brett Eddy. Yeah, we've only got the uh, one multiple goal kicker, Charlie. That's Liam McBean for the uh, game. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Which is good. 13 goal kickers and only uh, one has kicked two multiple goals. 
Oh, what a steal picked yeah. up by Turnbull. Gets it inside 50. Harley Purantata Mary at the back. <laughs> Free kick. Going to that man, Max Proud. He can hold his he head very high, the captain, Brooklyn and Earl. I can see why they've made him captain. Yeah. Just, just the way he conducts himself. And he's a brilliant player. I'm really impressed with him. And at the breakfast yesterday as well, he spoke really well. I thought brilliant. He, he was, spoke uh, really well. It was a great interview up on the stage. Thumping kick inside 50. Handball coming out by Matt Dennis. Big Dennis, he might be a big chance. Yeah, I'm, not that I'm biased or anything because he plays for my club. But <laughs> <laughs> Dalhouse kicks to the top of the square. And they're getting back in defence and they concede the behind. Well, my old coach Robert Walsh used to say, Ruckman win your premierships. That's what he used to say, Robbie Walls. They don't win the... Uh, go and ask Mike Fitzpatrick. Go and ask them blokes. They don't win yeah. the Brownlow very often, but when they, they, they need to win it a lot more often, I, I feel. <laughs> Luke Reynolds. Well, they get first use of the ball, so they can set the game up. Such an important... Here's Stokes. Kicks on the left boot. He's searching for Harley. Poor and Tata Mary, but it got away from him and rolled over the boundary line and out of play. The, 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 the game sort of died down a little bit, but still the pressure and the... And the well, they haven't the, stopped. No, they haven't stopped. It's you know, been they good. Haven't You're right, Tash, spot on. Still out there fighting, and it's nearly 22 minutes gone and, in this last quarter. And, and that's what you want to see. You want to see the, the territory spirit come through right from the start till the finish, Charlie. Yeah. There was your man there, Paredes, with another touch. Cheetahs over the top to Seal. Seal, the top of the goal square. Pack of players there. Cameron Islet shovels it out, gets it to Shorty Edwards. He's gone down and kicked that ball. Shorty Edwards, <laughs> Got himself down there. Got himself down there. And Shorty Edwards has the goal, so territory break away here. 22 four, 24 points of difference, not long left in this last quarter. So we just watch the guys down there, good kick forward, watch on replay. Kicks it to the hot spot, but well done at ground level here. Cameron Nylet and Shorty Edwards, he snuck down there. He started the game in the back line, but he snuck down there, Charlie. Loves kicking a goal. It was a good goal. And they got around him as well. So, as the siren goes to end this game, what a game of footy. Nine, 12 to six, six. They ran away with it in the last quarter, didn't they? Uh, the territory side. And they record a win here by... 18 points. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Representative footy returns to the Territory for the first time in 15 years. And that's our very own Territory Buffaloes victorious against the Glenelg Tigers. 9-12-66 to 6-6-42. Stick around, ladies and gentlemen. We've got presentations coming up next. Appreciative crowd enjoyed a real good game of footy. Four quarters of tough, hard, wet season footy. And they come out on top, the home team. Well done.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great pleasure to announce tonight's best on ground from the NTFL Buffaloes. Best on ground tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the captain, Cam Islet. And making the presentation to Cam this evening is Ted Liddy, the 1985 NT rep captain. We'll present that to Cam, followed by the shield. Ladies and gentlemen, before we wrap up, we are going to do the uh, presentation of the Shield. Once again, 1985 NT rep captain is going to present the Shield. 
Would you please once again congratulate the NTFL Buffaloes! We should also make mention on screen right now. On screen right now is Peter Carey, the 1985 Glenelg captain. Can we please thank Peter for coming out tonight? once more ladies and gentlemen as they hold the shield in their hands would you please congratulate the NTFL Buffaloes A big thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out tonight to what has been a very historic night here in the Northern Territory. Rep footy back, and we hope to see it again next year. Please drive home safely and have a great night.